this tutorial I'm actually picking up right after uh, our last tutorial, which in the last tutorial we uh, used uh, the type function to figure out what type uh, a variable a variable is. Um, and then we also looked at is instance, which again uh, has other uses, but right now we're checking true or false, like is variable x um, an integer? Is variable x a float? And of course, depending on what it is, we get a true or false. Now again, this is something, anytime you have a true or false, you can, you can check that uh, with a loop or uh, a st if statement of some sort. So real quick here, uh, we can check out uh, a value of something and not only, so in this case, sorry, in this case, we're going to say is instance z float and if it's true do something if it's false do something else so we'll say if uh, and I'm just gonna copy and paste this if is instance z a float well then we're going to print z is a float they're going to say else print it is not a float as an example and now when we hit enter we should get the message z is a float because z is a float z is a float but now we can take that another step and we can also you know do an if else uh, if elif or else statement of course checking all three but let's actually go out of the interpreter and create a script I'll call this what should I call this um, var check dot py again I'm using vim as my text editor and um, of course use whatever text editor you prefer just make sure it's not a word processor going to give it the shebang line here again I explained in previous videos the importance of that you can choose not to use it I think that's a bad choice there's really no reason not to put that there other than ignorance of not knowing to put it there um, so here we go I'm gonna say x equals 5 and then I'm gonna say okay if is instance x comma string well then we're gonna say print it's a string and then we're gonna say elif is instance x comma and we'll say integer we'll say oops don't forget our semicolon there or our colon there print it is a n int and we'll say else don't forget our colon there print it is a float okay so our code is working like just like we did in the interpreter we're setting a variable equal to 5 which in this case is a um, uh, an integer and then we're checking is instance this is instance that now again this really isn't proper this if else this would be really this should be sorry uh, the code would work but the statement is incorrect if else and we'll say again I'll just copy and paste this for a second float so we're checking if it's a float because as I said there are other options other than strings integers and float and X could be one of them so saying if else and then printing it is a float would be incorrect uh, so now we can say else and I'll just say it's something else okay so in previous tutorials we did that 
else at the end because there were only either two or three possible options. Here there's more than those three options, so we set the else statement at the end to cover all or other bases. So we'll save this, and of course we'll make it executable, giving it permission to run because no program should have permission to run on your system without you giving it permission. Then I'm going to say dot slash saying in this folder run this program, hit enter, and it says it is an int. Now that's because our code creates the variable and goes right into it. Now if I was to come back up in here and run this again, I'm going to say it is a string because we just changed it to a string. And of course if we come back here and do this, we should be able to do 5.5, .5, sure. Save it, run it again, and we get it is a float. And of course there's other options that we're not even going to get into in this series, but we have that else statement in case for some reason it was that. Now, taking this a step further, we could say input enter something, whatever. So we're getting the user input, right? Now, if you've watched previous the previous videos you know the problem that we're getting into right here we're saying x equals whatever the user inputs so I can run this code enter something I'll type in Chris and it will say it is a string and I can type in dog and it will say it is a string and if I run it again and I put the number five or any number whatever it says it is a string wait it's not a string right it's it's an integer so in previous videos, uh, when we needed to enter an integer, we would change the user input to an integer. So now we can run this, enter something, and I can type in a number and hit enter, and it goes, it's an integer. But it will always be an integer if I do that. And it will always be a string if I don't do that. And I can always convert it to a float, and it would always be a float. And right now, converting it to an integer, if I was to type in dog, I'm going to get an error because it can't convert dog to an integer. So how do we fix this problem? Well, the answer is simple, and it's what we're getting into next week. So I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. Come back next Wednesday. Uh, if you're watching these as I put them out, if they're already out, be sure to check out the annotation on the screen for the full playlist. If you're not already watching the playlist, visit my site, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description. And I hope that you have a great day.